What up? Rain Rockers, Smeldown fans, Smeldown Rocks. This week was actually quite interesting. Mostly technically singles, but one being more of a stipulation involving teams. So basically the fate of Harris Brothers slash Evil Geniuses, which is going to happen. And, um, yeah, this match wound up being a little more interesting than possible because it actually wound up sort of going down a little bit closer to the wire, basically forcing, kind of, uh, Jonathan Harris basically made, a made JTT sweat, this sweat, and for his kind of, re sort of return back, and or at least his first legitimate singles run return, I guess. And I, I guess it'll affect his record there. Um, but, you know, other than that, it's mostly just about the stipulation itself and how this and how this dynamic is going to... If JT wins, how is this dynamic with, with Evil Geniuses being managed by... Jonathan Harris actually going to work because Jonathan Harris has kind of started to prove he had does have a little bit more of a personality and uh, I don't know man I'm a little bummed I'm I'm a little I'm not really bummed actually but I'm kind of wondering how that's gonna fit in and then uh, all this uh, and then of course we have our number one contenders match which I wish I would have had my fox mask for that one but uh was kind of sort of I guess it was, which was William the Beast Bibiani versus basically three former champs going at it and basically giving us the match of one of those many matches that I think is pretty deserving to be a match of the year contender I don't know if it's like gonna win it compared to what we got from from the championship matches at the New York live event between Ethan and Merle and then the more more so the Shimon on Throwdown main event match between Cushing and Kalinowski. It's going to be tough to say that, but yeah, unless unless my man Smets, the Smasher himself, does manage to get into that number one contender spot to face Cushing at at a comic San Diego Comic Con. Should that be that be some fun? That'd be awesome. Wish I could. Hell, heck, if it wasn't such a far, super far drive, I would have went to that. Though, uh, I mean, if I you know didn't have to worry or wind up in a Roxy Strider situation, I probably would have made the live event. I made Star Wars Celebration for that live event at least, and for to be there for that special. That would have been cool for Mark's special, which would have comedy special, which would have been cool. Don't know how they're going to air it. Is it Netflix or Comedy Central? How are they doing it? Or, uh, yeah, that's what gets me curious. I don't know if Mark, unless Mark's got something. Mm. Lo it was definitely love to see it. So, let's see, uh, maybe it's on his web Mark's website. Who knows? But yeah, I really did enjoy. I enjoy these were some enjoyable matches. I mean, I wish. Even the live stuff I can't really talk about, but I think I will be able to talk about next week. I think. In fact, they weren't able to stream the celebration, the certain five-way match, so people who wound up having to see the one live stream for Saturday got spoiled big time on who won, though honestly from who won would not have, would honestly not surprise anyone. I'm just, you know, at all, really. And it overall did result in, honestly, a pretty solid Star Wars match. I'll just say that. I'll leave it at that. I'll talk more in depth when that happens, and same would be said for the number one contendership match for the team titles between Who's the Boss and an Odd Couple, which is interesting. More so the way they chose to end things, though I don't know how they're going to edit and post if we're going to actually see post interviews or something. But other than that, not really much I, else I can say on that one. The But back to the one stuff we can talk about. I don't know how Evil Jesus is going to work. Something's going to have to happen to where personalities between Lon and uh, 
until then, Ron Harris and JTE are going to have to start. Well, as Lon's got his hands full trying to basically deal with John, his brother Jonathan, and then JTE. Or Josh Tapia, basically. And they're the way the dynamic is going with that. I mean, it could lead to something. It could be like a similar, an almost similar thing with Odd Couple, but the way this was going to come across, it, to me, it seems like it's going to come come off more similar to that of mm, what we kind of would have gotten if Cinemaniacs actually managed to still remain a thing, but let's face it, that, was, that wasn't going to last too long because, though I does also kind of suck that we kind of lost top 10 for afterwards or any chance top 10 still continuing and at least getting a chance to get the belts again uh, or at least managed to do it and then defend it so <sighs> one day all right but speaking of of all these matches the one i'm really looking forward to is bibs is the that is the snow Tearship and how this match ended up below. I don't know what happened, but Bibbs is on fire, dude. Bibbs has been since free for all. Some I mean sure he lost his match career claim, but his he was on fire in that three for all. And like impressively, to the point where some whatever happened there, he managed to transition it into that. Plus I loved the entrance she, he chose, which I think everybody, at least everybody, will know that entrance. No matter what generation you are, you'll love that entrance. And it, it kind of, it only makes it all the more fun. And even referencing the entrance later in his post interviews. And he, that's the one thing that Bibb still needs to work on that I'm not even sure anybody cares that he, that, whether or not if he works on. And that's not even the entrances. And it's clearly not just his, tri and it's not his trivia game. It's clearly how he. How he how he cuts promos and through interviews and stuff, or at least certain ones that you can't edit around. <laughs> growl, growl. Uh, I'd say my buddy who really thought Bibbs was awesome, and he wanted him to get keep going, and so yeah, he he, my buddy, my my own buddy threw a showdown or something that I've got him into Schmo down. I don't know if he got to see that singles match. Hopefully he liked that. That was actually a pretty cool one. Ethan sums up been happening to Ethan. I don't know if his hype train eventually, like, and him gaining sort of an ego boost must be kind of affecting his gameplay. Um, I mean, it's balancing him out a little bit, but I think he needs to get his gameplay back in. And plus, right now, where sing the singles, top tier of singles is at, given who we had to have, in the num in this number one contenders match, I mean, yeah, Bibbs. What if he plays the way he's been playing since free for all? I think he might stand a chance at actually beating Merle, or keeping Merle from actually being able to defend his third reign as ti title holder, because it's that's what it took for it. Basically, took Dan to have a near perfect, a, a supposedly perfect but I would rather say near-perfect type game to win. And that's kind of what happened. The kind of game that he had was pretty damn close to the kind of game Merle had to have to beat Ethan, and that's exactly what he needed to do. And his and he, to the point where he had to break the singles record. And he did exactly just that, because he had not missed a question. Sure, he had a couple times he went multiple choice in round two, but which I think is more than what... But yeah, I think I would say it's probably more than what Merle, more times multiple choice than what Merle had to. So maybe if if Merle still has plays at his A game like he did at the live event, maybe he'll still maybe he'll still come out on top and at least once again be able to hold have a chance to retain a belt. I'm not sure if Bibbs is going to win it. I it'd be cool, but I don't expect him to beat. I mean, it's gonna if it's anything like what we kind of got at free for all. Yeah, um, I think it's more the fact Bibbs should probably win this out of story, main storyline purpose of him trying to, you know, make up for the, the unfortunate loss to Merle 
in, in at the free for all that almost led him to actually winning it, which is uh, what I think a lot of people would have preferred. But given that you know Merle's a freaking free three time champ, you know going into this, and probably could have won last year's, more than likely. Brienne was more of a surprise than anything, but yeah, it's just I don't I don't know if Bibbs can replicate what he did before. I don't think anybody's expecting it. Something tells me that if Bibbs does wind up uh, that uh, Bibiani least himself if he wins it again, if he does go into three for all for next year. And he winds up just winds up getting lucky and gets the number forty. Maybe, just maybe, he'll actually be able to do what he needs to do to to finally be to win that free for all. Because after the after being two time MVP in a row, he at least deserves a win on that regard, at least. And even if he doesn't, you know, because there's no, I don't think there is a way he can replicate what he did. No one's expecting him to, but you know. He's within the past two times. Anytime free for all is around, everybody's probably going to be wondering where Bibbs is. That's for sure. But yeah, it was a good win. His promo was kind of whatever. Uh, it's kind of I guess I understand if he has to if Roka needs to for a little while take a break from singles just to focus on teams, especially which he's definitely going to need to do. He's going to need to rebuild his momentum alongside Dan Merle to basically go going into the Houston live event at book at the reality of wrestling what Booker T's arena for reality of wrestling for reality of wrestling and seeing if he can win that. I cannot wait to see that, how that goes over and, uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. Overall, I did enjoy, I've that match. I think was of the two. It's hard to say of the two. Um, Surpri the J J the stipulation match was more surprising in terms of how tight that match was matchup was and it basically came down to essentially Jonathan's five pointer for the most part made him sweat but JT still got a bit of an ego on him and from being a former champion they think they're going to have the run that they do I'm not expecting it given the way their dynamic is right now but it just depends on what teams they're going to have to face to um, Maybe movie guy. Maybe I mean I, they're challenging Inky in the brain, and you know what? There might be a better have them challenge Inky in the brain, for sure. That would be a better idea than whatever the heck uh, Devon Devin Stewart or well, I think Devin is what he wants to go by. Go by when with when he's with Inky in the brain as opposed to Kingsman. But yeah, I, Inky in the brain. Yeah, you're better off just facing evil geniuses. You might have. It's probably a better idea than you know facing McWeeny and them. Like if you can beat them, then yeah, you, maybe you have a, maybe you could potentially, if you could beat someone who was a former champ that McWeeny was able to beat, then maybe you might stand a chance. But I don't even know about that. Maybe you need another couple wins on that one. But that would have been interesting. But yes, we don't. I don't. And they're setting up some weird thing from the cutscene promo there in the beginning. Between, I mean, there was also another cutscene that kind of led to still the fate of the horsemen and where Ben still fits in, if not, if anything at all. Ben basically say, stating what he did in his uh, Inside Schmodown interview to Roka, only, but in some weird way, kind of further proving to Roka that maybe they do need him after all in some capacity. So don't know if he'll actually doesn't seem like he'll actually join right now we'll see what cutscene we'll have go following up going into that Me, well I'm willing to bet maybe they could pull it off pull off the possibility that maybe he will join them them anyway or at least they'll take away his ego about it and he'll join them maybe that's what's going to happen in that post interview because I do know Roka and Nost eventually went down to Chicago I guess to do a top 10 thing. I thought it was in San Diego in back in California, but it was probably in Chicago. So that was interesting. Maybe they'd make an appearance. Apparently I didn't think Dorino was there according to some, one of our fellow reactor Henry Sanchez's uh, photos he put up. Uh, apparently Dorino was there. 
Did not know that. But anyway. Uh, man, things you miss out on. Just to mow yards before it rains. On top of, you know, not having friends who, you know, would be able to try to make it to do and that, something like that. Uh, seriously, I would have liked to have went to that thing. Yeah. You know, I would have had to immediately go three hours, but by that point, it would have been all over, and I'd have probably wasted time, wasted too much time doing it, so. Oh, well. Hmm. Other than that, I'd say the Ethan did as well as he could, and both play, both guys performed really well. I mean, Roka, unfortunate, it was unfortunate with Roka, but... Um, tip you had it to you. Hopefully you found your you and hopefully you and uh, Merle as founding fathers can have a good run in teams moving forward. Hopefully you can finally get your match with corruption. Would lo looking forward to seeing the double toasted matchup, which is honestly a little bit more interesting than the matchup we would have gotten with wild berries. You know I like me some wild berries. It was a. We I think we all know that match would have been one sided. Sided in that one, and it was kind of smart to hear the. To hear have double toasted call call out and say even though they really, got real rejects and founding fathers confused because by the time they get called out and they realize wait we're facing former champs. <laughs> we're champs that have been uh, been around. Yeah, yeah. Once that once like. Once he announces it, he's gonna be like, "You, I, I'd love to see the reaction that Corey Coleman's gonna have, uh, even as a Toasties Unite on that one." Oh, man, oh, that's other. Overall, I this week was enjoyable. Evil geniuses moving forward. No Harris brothers, no more. Although I. Now that still leaves open, who the hell is Stacy's partner? Because a lot of people were thinking JTE, but after this, and us kind of figuring JTE would win this, of all things, because he knows at least how to play the game, even if his trivia knowledge itself is a little meh. He, it's clear he knows how to play the game a lot better, out of experience. Rain Rust definitely didn't affect him, but that's mostly because Harris... Eh, isn't that much of an opponent, but, you know, given the, how the two of them and their, where they were at, it's just made sense to see him win, so, to win. A lot of people were expecting, kind of expecting it, but now we don't know how Evil Genius is moving forward. They still have that 1-0 record they had, the, basically the win over the Wild Berries in the tournament. Harris Brothers is moving forward. At least we all got to see Harris Brothers face critically acclaimed since, you know, a lot of people have been basically comparing Harris Brothers to critically acclaimed in terms of personalities. So it just seemed to be a new... Which, at least we got that... Had that going for us. So. Shame critically acclaimed couldn't win, pull out the win, but I don't think a lot of people were expecting them to pull out the win because Shire Wolves were just that... Are just that dang good. And and it's not like Bibbs and, that, and them didn't try, at least, to show that they were damn good team as well they just weren't compared to what happened with uh, the shark with Shar was who's a boss yeah I'm not sure they were as good of a team like it's gonna be tough to beat Shire Wolves whoever goes into that one uh, which I will talk about later on that one but once again what did you guys think of the matches also that Rocky exhibition match is awesome uh people who haven't earned a patreon definitely check that out also cannot wait to see the future uh exhibition matches involving rocky especially between harloff and dagnito hopefully harloff pulls something out pretty well um with that one and apparently a stallone movie thing that's gonna happen probably with jt and uh and dagnito is gonna be fun also, can't wait for the next episode of Little Bobby and Juice, too, so i just throw that out there. <laughs> but, yeah. What did you... Um, also, that Star Wars trailers. More... more. I, I, I'm not entirely sure on Mandalorian, but the what teaser for Died looks pretty nice. Oh, didn't really see much on that, but... Anyways, what did you guys think of the matches? 
much as uh, leave a comment below, let me know. As always, guys, keep it random, keep it real, keep it rocking. If you smell what the movie trivia showdown and the showdown rocks.